Yeah, I hope that you hearing me uh-huh. This is the future, all about cyber security Talking about the hackers, I'm just trying to warn you From the one and only legend, the cyber informer Hey, Yeah, yeah, this is the cyber reformer uh, This is the cyber reformer, let's go It's time for the Cyber Security Business Connect and Protect Central Coast Informational Video I am Michael Trimblett, the cyber informer And today we'll be talking about the Essential 8 Restrict administrative privileges. Restricting administrative privileges is important to stop the installation of malware on your computer. If you don't have the ability to install or run applications, you can't get infected by running a program that assumes you have admin privileges. In this video, we'll show you the fundamental ideas behind restricting administrative privileges and talk about some of the gotchas as there are some significant restrictions on the end user that they may not like. And you may be increasing your IT support costs at the same time. Let's go. What are administrative privileges? Administrative privileges can be network or domain privileges or workstation or local privileges. According to the Essential 8, we must Restrict administrative privileges to operating systems and applications based on user duties. Regularly revalidate the need for privileges and don't use privileged accounts for reading email and web browsing. Why do you do this? Admin accounts are the keys to the kingdom. Hackers can use these accounts to gain full access to information and systems. We have an early propeller hat zone. This section is rated two propeller hats out of five as we'll be taking a closer look at all of the different type of user accounts that could be in play on a network. Domain admin versus domain users. Domain administrators have full access to all the computers and other resources on the network. These accounts will be assigned to IT administrators. In other words, people who need full access to the network in order to maintain it. Domain users have limited access to the network until they are assigned access. These accounts will be assigned to any user who is not an IT administrator. However, the Essential 8 dictates that IT administrators should be assigned a separate domain user account which has less privileges. We will talk about this as we progress through this video. Due to the power of domain administrators, it is imperative these domain accounts are protected at all cost. Local admin versus local users. Local administrators have full access to one computer only and no access to resources on the network. These accounts will be configured as a fallback should network connectivity become a problem. The Essential 8 dictates that these local admin accounts should be disabled. However, that's not always practical as these local admin accounts are required to be used should an issue arise on the workstation. And issues arise frequently enough to make disabling local admin accounts a risky move. If a fault arises on a computer and we can't get local admin access, it will likely need to be rebuilt from scratch rather than repaired, which can become a costly exercise. A brand new computer will have a local admin account configured by default. If you have purchased a computer from Harvey Norman, for example, when you turn it on for the first time, you'll be asked to create a new user account. This account will be a local administrator whether you know it or not. Local user accounts have limited access to the computer they are logged into and no access to the network. These accounts are rarely configured as they are very restrictive. We talked about the balance between security and usability in the multi-factor authentication introductory video. The same balancing act occurs here. You want security? You must run as a standard local user account. You want usability? you must run as a local admin account. If your network doesn't have a server, you will need a local admin or a local user account configured on your workstation in order to use it. Domain admin versus local admin. When I first started out in IT, this is one of the hardest concepts to get my head around. On networks that are on a domain, domain admins only exist where there is a Windows server running the network. By default, domain administrators are local administrators of all computers on the network. Networks that do not have a domain, This is typically where there is no central server. By default, local administrators only have access to the workstation they are logged into. They do not have access to the rest of the network, unlike domain administrators. Local administrators can change any setting and install software only on the workstation they are logged into. Local user accounts, also known as standard users, are used to restrict what the user can do on the computer. As the user is restricted from installing software or running updates, Higher IT support costs may be incurred because each time a new program needs to be installed or an update applied, administrative privileges are likely needed. This likely means a call to your IT support center or an internal employee that knows what they are doing may need to perform the installation or upgrade. To summarize what we've just learned, this table shows that 
local admin can configure anything on the computer that you're logged into but has no access to the network. Local users can log onto the workstation the user is configured on but not much else. Domain admins can do anything they like on a computer across the entire network. Domain users can log on to any workstation in the network but not much else. We're now exiting the propeller hat zone. Now we get an understanding of admin accounts versus standard user accounts and how they differ. All right, let's see what happens when you try to install a program on a workstation where you're logged in as a domain administrator versus a domain user. Okay, we can see on my workstation, I have three applications in there. We have a Notepad++ installer, we have Evil1 and Evil2. I'm on as a local administrator account. When I double click on Notepad++, we will see that it will allow me to install the application. We can see the installer executes, and if I click OK, this will install the program. We can see we also have Evil1 on this machine. This is a malicious payload masquerading as a regular installation program. So when we double click on it, we'll see what happens. We can see it looks like it crashes. However, when we look at my hacking machine, we can see that we have a connection back to the machine. And if I type in who am I, we'll see what user we are actually connected as. This is the big daddy. This is what hackers want to see. They want to see that you're in as the system user. This is higher than admin privileges. So this payload has used the admin privilege to execute a program to give us system access. This is really, really bad. I'll exit out and then reset. We'll click OK to that application. All right, so now we'll have a look at Evil 2. This is another malicious payload, but it's not an installer. When I run that, it doesn't look like it does anything on the Windows machine. But looking back on my hacking box, we can see that we've made another connection back to that machine. If I type in, who am I? We will see we're actually on as the admin user, not as system. So there is a difference. As we're on as the admin user, we could actually then escalate our privilege to system, but that takes a little bit more work from the hacker's side of things. All right, we'll back out and reset, and we'll have a look at what happens when we go in as a standard user. So we'll sign out and we'll log in as the Cyber Informer. Okay, now that we're logged in as a standard user, we'll go into Installers, and we'll double click on Notepad++. What we will see is User Account Control stops us and says, we need an admin account for you to execute this program. Unlike in the last time, where when we ran it, it just ran. This time we need to put in admin credentials in order to run the application. So let's have a look. There we go. So we're now at the installer program. We hit OK and it will install. OK, let's see what happens when we try and install Evil 1. Again, we get user account control popping up on the screen asking us to enter some credentials. If we put in the admin credentials, that program will execute and we'll get a connection back to our machine. So currently, we have nothing back on the hacking machine at the moment because that program hasn't been allowed the access to run yet. But what we'll do is just cancel that. We also have Evil 2 on this machine. So what happens if we try and run that? We don't get user access control popping up on the screen and it looks like it does nothing. But if we look back on my hacking machine, we can see that it has executed and we have a connection back to the machine. We'll type in who am I to see who we're on as. Okay, we're in as the standard user. We're not in as an admin user, which is the loyal IT, and we're not in as system. However, with a foothold like this, hackers can elevate their privileges to admin or into system. But depending on restrictions that you have on the machine, it may not be possible for a hacker to get past this stage. So the message here is that even if you are not an admin user, you can still execute malicious code if the hacker crafts it in a way that is intended to bypass the security method. Okay, another propeller hat zone. This section is rated 3 propeller hats out of 5, as we will be taking a closer look at access controls on domain networks and talk about methodologies associated with these controls. Least privileged administrative models. Most security related training courses and documentation discuss the implementation of a principle of least privilege, yet organizations rarely follow it. The principle is simple, and the impact of applying it correctly greatly increases your security and reduces your risk. The principle states that all users should log on to the user account that has the absolute minimum permissions necessary to complete the current task and nothing more. Quoted from the Microsoft article in this slide. 
you should grant all domain administrator users their domain privileges under the concept of least privilege. For example, if an administrator logs on with a privileged account and inadvertently runs a virus program, the virus has administrative access to the local computer and to the entire domain. If the administrator had instead logged on with a non-privileged, non-administrative account, the virus's scope of damage would only be the local computer because it runs as a local computer user. This really sums up what the Essential 8's Restrict Administrative Privileges is striving to achieve. To be frank, it is not widely adopted because it impacts too much on the usability of a system. Network resource access means accessing other network devices to use the service it offers. This can be shared documents, printers, or the internet. A domain administrator will assign access to certain network resources for domain users. To make things simple, groups are created to group similar domain users together. The groups are assigned access to network resources. Groups are typically named for the department they are in. Examples of groups could be accounts, HR, or management. Domain users can belong to one or more groups. Network resource access audit. As people change roles within the organization, Groups should be audited periodically to ensure users have the access they should have and nothing more. In order to conform to the Essential 8's Maturity Model Level 3, these should be audited no less than annually. Any users in groups that shouldn't be in there should be removed from the incorrect groups. Restrict Privileged User Accounts Maturity Level 3 also states that technical security controls are used to prevent privileged users from reading emails, browsing the web, and obtaining files via online services. Restrict access for privileged accounts by issuing administrators a standard user account in addition to separate privileged and unprivileged administrator accounts for administrative purposes. The reason for this was discussed back at the beginning of the video. If a domain admin opened an email with a ransomware link or downloaded a virus from the internet, it could be unleashed across the network. If that user was a restricted user, it would not be as damaging. Delegated administration. In computing, delegated administration or delegation of control describes the decentralization of role-based access control systems. Many enterprises use a centralized model of access control. A centralized model means that there is a main admin user that does everything. Decentralized means that there are a number of user accounts that have privileges for a single administrative task. The goal of delegation is to create groups with minimum permissions that grant the ability to carry out authorized tasks. This means having separate privileged and unprivileged administrator accounts for administrative purposes. There are default groups on Windows Server which cater for delegated admin. Check out the image at the bottom of this slide. If an admin needed to update DNS, there's a DNS admins group for that. If they needed to update DHCP, there is a DHCP admin group. There are a number of different default groups to assign users to in order to manage the network without needing a single centralized super admin account. All tasks could be completed using a number of lesser privileged accounts. We're now exiting the propeller hat zone. We now know the ideas behind restricting administrative privileged accounts. In the premium membership, there'll be individual videos on each of the essential eight, which will dive into each of the maturity levels and what you need to know to implement them. For the moment, all we need to know is that there are three levels in each of the essential eight items, maturity level one, two, and three. Maturity level three requires us to have privileged access to systems, applications, and data repositories is validated when first requested and revalidated on an annual or more frequent basis. In other words, audit the accounts and groups periodically. Privileged access to systems, applications, and data repositories is limited to that required for personnel to undertake their duties. This refers to enforcing role-based delegation of privileges. Typically, this is more effective in larger networks with internal IT staff. As SMEs typically will have an outsourced IT company manage their network, a super admin account is more efficient when you need to call on IT support but it is less secure. It's important that the network administrator role is not assigned to a manager or staff member. This would be very bad practice. Technical security controls are used to prevent privileged users from reading emails, browsing the web, and obtaining files via online services. Restrict access for privileged accounts by issuing administrators a standard user account, in addition to separate privileged and unprivileged administrator accounts for administrative purposes. So what did we learn? The four main types of accounts, domain admin and users versus local admin and users. We saw that the standard user accounts can't install or run programs without the admin password. We learnt the least privilege principle. 
we need to audit users and groups periodically. To be secure, we need to use a decentralized or delegated administration model. This is a very complex topic with many different moving parts. We'll get further down into the weeds in the premium membership. Thank you for joining me for a look at restricting administrative privileges. Don't forget, you can contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Until next time, stay safe online. Oh, yeah, this is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down like, oh, yeah, this is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down, yeah.